Welcome, my name is Rob Tepping and we're going to be discussing the Measure Square 8 Power User School Takeoff Tips. There are many unique features in Measure Square that can really speed up institutions, kindergartens, schools. So without further ado, pull up a chair, let's get started. Before we get started, there are a few things that you really have to know. Very few things for what we want to do today. First, we got to start with some kind of room. And to consider this a, a blackboard moment here. We're going to go to a real drawing any second now. We must understand that we have a room. If we go to options, the walls may be turned off, so we're going to turn them back on again. For all intents and purposes, for this video, let's consider that a room. I'm going to turn these off, makes it a little easier. Now, if we want to divide or zone, we can simply use the divide tool bring it up and down and it's that easy now to me what defines a divide or a zoning over a room is simply there are no walls here so to put the walls back in again we've got a room that's now been divided into separate pieces obviously the main reason to do something like that would be to keep products separated uh, from one another and, and show some definition so just for an illustration here Let's just put different colored tiles in. This is very common to a lot of commercial work, not just institutions. Um, but to all intents and purposes, that's just something we need to know for this video. You're also going to need to know that if you use the split tool from the room menu, those simple divisions become walls. That simple. That's the only difference between the two. So let's move on. Start talking about dividers and accents on a real job. In the previous video, we took a very simple blackboard approach, drew out a square, separated it into zones, and separated it into rooms. So what's the difference between a blackboard depiction and the real thing? Nothing at all. If I put this in, perspective by putting in the image below boom thing we look at every day the blueprint the famous blueprint which isn't even blue now I'm going to tidy this up a bit because it's a bit sloppy my apologies but it's essentially everything we discussed in the last segment is here so moving along what we really want to do is we really want to speed things up a little now we can drag these products in from the menu and we can drag the vinyl base in and we can do that in every room but what if this was two or three stories or 11 stories or 14 whatever the case may be it would get very uh slowing how would i say put a lag in the room so what we're going to do is we're going to speed things up with one excellent tool here and it's called product assignment profile we're going to copy that room profile we're going to take these other rooms and we're going to select them and if you hold the control key down on the keyboard you can get multiple selections when you left click and we're going to put them in from the same menu at paste room profile now that may seem like a few seconds here but again imagine if this was a much larger project it would be saving you a lot of time an excellent tool way more interesting way more detailed and accurate the windows native tools and it's just a treat to deal with absolutely now when we get into what we were talking about earlier about dividing rooms there could be numerous reasons for this um, someone should have uh, could have decided they want a different color of tile uh, in this area uh, so let's go and put some dividers in for a second so just hypothetically we want to change the color only in a certain area it doesn't exist on this drawing actually I'm just winging it for the purpose of illustration so to divide the room we don't need walls we just need to put in a different colored tile but sticking with the program of speed here you saw how quickly that divided and it's ready to go and that's one simple division right there so while we're on the topic of dividing, let's move into accents. Now, I don't know if this is typical 
of schools and institutions, but it isn't unusual for people to make something with the VCT that picks it up a little. VCT is extremely simple pattern friendly, and it's not unusual to find patterns within. Uh, you shouldn't be afraid of these. Um, when they're full tile patterns, they're very easy to accomplish. And there are two main ways that I know of. Let's start with what is feasibly slower, but in some ways more straight ahead. And uh, it's a little bit of fun to do too. Let's start by using the tile replacement tool. So replace tile in diagram. What this does with these highlights is quite literally you paint them on. Now this is fun. It's kind of cool. I'll show you how to deal with how I'm going out of the realm here. So this is one way of dealing with the highlights. And all you do to get rid of the ones you don't want is to simply go over them again and they will come out. Uh, don't be alarmed by it being slightly different color. Uh, that's a different story, but th this will come out uh, just fine. When you're doing this kind of work, you really need to save it all the time. That's the best advice I can give you. It is fairly fast, but it's also fairly fast to lose. Okay, so as you do the work and you paint them in, save the work. Now, the other way of doing this is exactly the same way as we've been doing the rooms and the other dividers, and that is just to take the dividing tool and divide away just as if you were putting in rooms or zones. I'm getting a little bit of lag here. Um, this is not typical. I think maybe my hard drive um, is a little too full this morning. Once you've done that, you need to separate, of course, anywhere that doesn't have the color that you want. But then it performs exactly like the other ones. Wherever we want to put a tile now, you simply drag it in, just like it was a room. So that's essentially two ways of doing the same thing. Uh, again, very user friendly and uh, a quick way of taking care of these accents and divisions. You shouldn't be afraid of them. Don't think it's going to add a massive amount of time to your day because these two methods are, are, are very quick and, and you can deal with this expediently. When it comes to sheet vinyl, perhaps it's not as much about the software as it is having an understanding of vinyl period. So in terms of putting the products in, it's a similar deal. Uh, it's just a drag and drop. And first thing you got to know that in North America, nobody's going to accept um, a layout like with, that comes in here natively. They're going to be looking for it to be centered. Uh, this is more wasteful. There's no doubt about it. Uh, but there really isn't a way of getting around it. It's what people expect to see, and you're going to get a lot of resistance if you try and move away uh, from this kind of uh, layout. Now, another thing that you need to know and you need to ask is you need to ask whether it's a directional or a non-directional material because we could avoid a lot of... Um, misunderstandings and a poor finished job by knowing exactly which way something's going to go. And in a situation where the, the product is directional, meaning it can only go one way, hence the arrows here, you're going to get a layout something similar to this. You can't just go in here, divide these like we have done on other occasions and turn the material. You're not going to be able to do that. It's just not going to look right. But you can do that on non-directional material. So it is important to establish right from the beginning what type of material you're working with. The other thing that's often misunderstood, and I see folks doing this all the time, is they don't really understand the cove base. The cove base is where uh, the product continues to run up the wall. Now, there's two ways of looking at that. If you apply it like a regular baseboard, in other words, if you make a line item the same as you would a vinyl base and put it on, then at the end, convert that manually or externally uh, into square yardage, square foot, footage, whatever you're used to using, that will work. There's no doubt about it. And I see people do that every day. And I don't use it myself. 
Uh, what I like to do is use the tools that are available in the program. And one of the tools is to set the coving. In this case, we got it set to six inches. We'll leave it there. And what this does, it actually adds on. Let's turn the walls off so you can see this a little better. It actually adds on that coving. Now, some folks like this and some don't. To me, I think it's completely brilliant because that's, that's the work taken care of. And it adds it on to the product itself in the product cutting range. And you, you're pretty much done. Now, the wastage you're seeing right here can be consolidated somewhat and it can be um, utilized the more product you have. We're not going to worry about that too much for a second. We're going to stay with it. But that, that, to all intents and purposes, that's done. There's no reworking, no recalculating to do. You might want to make some allowance for the corners because it uses slightly more material. But really, it's finished. When it comes to modular carpet, and some folks call them carpet squares, there is a great tool in Measure Square um, 8. And it's a directional tool. Actually, we should call it a directional over to overlay, which we can put on in this menu uh, to give us the direction of the tiles. So you can see here, this has not been altered. They're going in one direction, no specific direction, because it's just something that came right out of the box, so to speak. But you'll note with the carpet tile, and you will see this a lot out there, or at least I run into it a lot, is people want to change the direction of the tile, sometimes quite specifically. So how on earth do you convey that to someone if it comes out of the box natively, like this, and or we don't put these tile directions in? Now this is fairly straightforward to do. Lots of people panic when I say pattern maker, but don't, okay? Because it's pretty, it's pretty simple to do. So let's just take a look at this for a second. First, you've got to find your product. And in this case, I've just put one carpet tile in, for example. When you go there, right-click on it, Design Pattern With. Now, I'm going to do this the super simple way, just to convey the meaning. So, if we were to put all of these in now, and to put on that direction tool, the arrow would be all going one way, probably up. It seemed like the... The default method on the main drawing there but what we want it to do is we want it to reflect turning now unfortunately if we copy and simply turn it once and move it along and copy the original not the copy copy this and turn it twice Copy again, and turn it three times. What this is effectively done now is given us that pattern that we were looking at on the drawing. You save it out, save it to patterns, give it a name that's applicable. So let's put in example direction. And OK. Now, when you get back over the side, it's not in here immediately. It's going to be in the patterns. You're going to need to pull it out of the patterns first. And we're going to have directional. It goes alphabetically. So, uh, sorry, yeah. Example direction. So, what we're going to do is we're going to bring this one over. Now, once we do that, you'll get this pop-up window. I advise just double-checking you've got the right carpet in there, the one that you wanted, and OK. And bang, and bang. We go over to the Options, Tile Direction. Thank you for joining us on this short video. Please check out the free trial and demonstration from Measure Square. You're going to really enjoy this software. If you like this video, give it a like. It'll help us do more videos just like it. 
and talk about things that really apply to the job and make sure that you get a trial. If you haven't used the software before, you're going to really like it. I guarantee it.